Hello, and thank you for joining us. My name is Eric Wemans, and today I'll be giving an overview of navigation tasks using the AI Habitat platform. As a general outline for this, first I'll give an overview of navigation tasks, then we'll dive into a specific task point call navigation and talk about agents, their embodiments, their architecture, and how we frame point call navigation as a reinforcement learning problem. Finally, I'll briefly touch on training an agent and what type of performance you can achieve in this task. So let's start with the overview of navigation tasks. First type of task we'll talk about is where the agent is tasked with navigating to a specific place in the environment, specified by a goal in various forms, such as point call navigation, where the agent is tasked with navigating to a point in the environment, specified relative to its initial location. Next is object goal navigation, where the agent is given the name of an object and is tasked with finding an instance of that object in the environment. And then we have room goal navigation, where the agent is given the name of a room and tasked with navigating to an instance of that room in the environment, like kitchen in this example. Then we have vision and language navigation, which is grounded instruction following. In this task, the agent is given an instruction in natural language, such as leave the bedroom and enter the kitchen, walk forward and take a left at the couch, stop in front of the window. The agent then must follow this instruction to reach the goal. And finally, we have embodied question answering where the agent is given a question in natural language, such as what color is the car, and then must navigate throughout the environment such that it can gather sufficient information to answer the question. These navigation tasks have similarities in their evaluation protocol that's worth pointing out. Evaluation is done in unseen environments. In embodied AI, we're not only interested in creating agents that can do their task in known environments, but we're also interested in creating agents that are able to take what they learned in training environments and generalize that to unseen validation environments. Second is that both success and efficiency are counted. The agent is judged both by whether or not it successfully completes this task and how efficiently it does that task. In the case of goal-driven navigation, we would prefer an agent that's able to quickly get to the goal instead of taking a long wandering path throughout the environment. And now we'll dive into the task of point goal navigation. In point goal navigation, an agent is initialized in a novel unseen environment and tasked with navigating to a point specified relative to its initial location. Note that the top-down map shown on the right here is solely for visualization purposes. The agent does not have access to this. Instead, the agent must navigate using its sensors, which includes a depth sensor, an RGB camera, and a GPS plus compass sensor. The agent utilizes its GPS plus compass sensor to update the goal to be relative to its current location which is why we're visualizing it like that. However, the GPS plus compass sensor itself tells the agent its current position and orientation relative to its initial position and orientation at the start of the episode. Using its sensors, the agent then navigates to the goal as such. The agent has the following embodiment in the environment. The agent is modeled as a cylinder with a radius of 0.1 meters and has access to four low-level actions. Stop, which the agent uses to signal that it believes it has reached the goal. Move forward, which moves it 0.25 meters forward. Turn left, which turns it 10 degrees to the left. And turn right, that turns it 10 degrees to the right. In the case of point goal navigation with GPS plus compass, the inclusion of a stop action may seem superfluous. However, it's included for consistency. In tasks like point goal navigation without GPS plus compass, or the other navigation tasks we talked about earlier, Simply determining whether or not the agent has reached the goal is an important problem in and of itself. So it's important for the agent to have this stop action such that it knows that it has reached the goal instead of randomly coming upon it. The agent is controlled with a deep neural network that has the following general architecture. We take the observations at each time step. The visual observations are then processed with a CNN. And this, in the embedding, the output of the CNN is concatenated with the updated position of the goal. This is then given to a, a policy parameterized by some type of recurrent neural network, which is then used to predict the action to take. This process then continues on over time, taking actions, receiving observations, processing them, and then giving it to the policy until the agent finally reaches the goal and predicts stop. We're then going to train this agent using deep reinforcement learning. Deep reinforcement learning has the following general objective. It seeks to maximize the expected reward over the trajectory of an episode. So as the agent goes along with its episode, uh, it goes along completing its task, 
it receives reward and it wants to get the maximum reward that it can. I won't dive too deep into deep reinforcement learning in this tutorial as there are other resources out there such as online classes and other tutorials that cover this quite well. However, there are two aspects of deep reinforcement learning worth understanding as they relate to training and agent for point cloud navigation and how the AI Habitat platform is utilized for this. The first is how do we encode the task of point cloud navigation as a reward structure? In order to look at that, we're gonna dive into this part of the reward function, the reward the agent receives at each time step. The simplest way to encode this task would be as follows. You have some coefficient times success if the agent properly, if the agent took the stop action. And this does encode the task of point cloud navigation correctly. We want the agent to reach some state such that it's within 0.2 meters of the goal and predict the stop action. However, this would be a very challenging reward function to optimize for. That's due to the following. Consider a episode where the agent needs to take 100 actions to successfully reach the goal. This gives a total number of trajectories of four to the 100. If only one of these is successful, we will never find it by random chance. So instead, to make this optimization problem tractable, we add an intermediary reward, a reward that gives the agent intermediary, an intermediary signal of whether or not it's making progress towards the goal. That is the following structure. It has two components, the first of which is negative change in distance to goal. So this tells the agent whether or not the action that it took got it closer to the goal. And the second part is a small negative penalty. This encodes the fact that we want the agent to make it to the goal efficiently. An agent that will take a long uh, windy path to the goal will incur more of these negative penalties, and thus will have a lower cumulative reward than an agent that gets to the goal quickly. The second part of deep reinforcement learning to understand is what does the core loop of it look like? How do we go about optimizing this? The core loop of it is that you have some agent, that agent goes to some state, and then it selects an action to take. After selecting that action, it's transitioned to the next state, and this process repeats. Note that this is quite different than supervised learning. In supervised learning, we have some data set and we can train the agent directly on that. But in reinforcement learning, we now need to be able to evaluate the agent within the environment to collect the data necessary to train it. The second thing is that this diagram hides a lot of the complexity. When the agent's in a state and takes action, how do we determine where it ends up? And then once it's there, how do we determine what its sensors will look like in that state? So this is where Habitat Sim comes in. We use Habitat Sim to uh, take the agent in its current state and its selected action, and then figure out where the agent will end up while respecting its embodiment, the geometry of the environment, any actuation noise we may be simulating, et cetera. And then once we have this state, Habitat Sim is then used to determine what the agent's sensors will output in that state. What does the depth camera look like, the RGB camera, et cetera. And this is why the Habitat platform focuses so much on speed. If you want to train an agent for tens of millions or hundreds of millions of steps of experience, you'll necessarily need to do this tens of millions or hundreds of millions of time, times, so speed is paramount. In general, the loop of deep reinforcement learning that you'll see in the Habitat platform is as follows. First, we collect a set of trajectories using the current policy. Then we use the set of uh, collected experience to update the policy, and we repeat. And now I'll talk about training an agent. So training an agent is done in Habitat Lab, and specifically within the Habitat Baselines folder. This contains CNN plus RNN agent variants, and also a high quality implementation of Proximal Policy Optimization, or PPO. PPO is what we use in that second step. PPO takes the current policy, a set of experience collected under it, and updates the weights of the agent such that it will get a higher expected reward over the course of an episode or do a better job at its task. And then using these two, plus a lot of training experience, you can achieve agents that do the following. They're able to reach their goal even when spawned very far away from it initially. And also they're able to successfully notice their mistakes and backtrack to correct them. The agent in this case was trained with decentralized distributed PPO, which is a large scale distributed version of PPO 
designed for training embodied AI agents that scales to hundreds of GPUs. And while you may not have the resources to reproduce this, train weights are available as part of Habitat Lab. Finally, I want to talk about what's next in this tutorial and how it connects with training an agent for navigation tasks. We have a tutorial on Habitat Sim Basics for navigation. And in that, we'll talk about how Habitat, what core components of Habitat Sim are used in this process. Then also, we have a tutorial on Habitat Lab for navigation. And in that, we'll talk about how to create sensors for agents, how to create evaluation metrics for those agents, and we'll look at the entry points into the RL training code base. Thank you very much. You can visit our website to see the rest of the videos in this tutorial and get their accompanying material. And please feel free to reach out if you have any questions.